The views expressed on this holiday podcast special are those of the podcasters, any guests, and do not reflect any of the management, employees, sponsorships, or affiliates of thereof. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Do you ever feel alone during the holidays? I've been there before, and it's not a fun place to be, which is why I wanted to create a special for somebody like me back in the day. I just wish I had a listening ear or maybe even heard stories that brightened up my time or my mood. I wanted that. So here's my gift to you. This is 12 Days of Christmas with me, Dre Rocket. I got some of my closest friends and uh, we talk Christmas. We talk about their favorite traditions and new ones as well. I hope you enjoy and a very Merry Christmas from me to you. The change, you filthy animal. Listen daily with my dad and his friends for 12 days of Christmas. Only here on Unrestricted. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. It's Dre Rocka. 12 days of Christmas or Podsmas. This is day number nine. We made it nine days straight Dang. of good content. And I got uh, my guest across from me. Somebody that has... A song out for the last well, about a year now, right? Yeah, a little over a year. A little over a year, yeah. Um, Wear My Sweater. One of my favorite songs, <laughs> Christmas songs, holiday songs, whatever I you want to call it. Feel Good Music. Um, Got my man Heva in the building. How you doing, yes, Heva? sir, man. I'm feeling good, Dre. The, the vibes are immaculate. It smells I, like Christmas in here. I know y'all can't smell how it <laughs> smells in here, but it smells great. Eventually, we'll have smell vision <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to do something like that. I don't but, I don't know if you like uh maybe there's like something attached to your TV and anytime anytime something smells good, it yeah, just some of aromas, sh- but then just don't don't be farting on the yeah, end on this right? thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just watch what you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heba, yeah. man, uh I appreciate you coming by, man. I uh I, I I posted your your song. Always does, man. Always shows love to that one. And we uh we uh we, we linked up and I'm like yeah come by man come by twelve days Bro, of I've Christmas been, been trying to come into been trying to get to the stew man yeah been trying to come into um into the creative spot and uh, see what's up man I always see it on uh, you know that your episodes that you be putting out on YouTube you know I'm subscribed yeah. Thank and you. Uh, yeah just be checking out all um, your content I'm like man I wanna you know I wanted to stop by have a little convo with the bro it's been yeah. a while bro since. Yeah. Since you ninety two, yeah, since, since you, yep. yeah, since we did that um, interview, so, but yeah, man, it just feels good to be here. Thank uh, you, thanks for the invite, man. It's an honor to be a part of the uh, twelve days of uh, Podsmas. Yep, twelve days yeah, of man, Podsmas. This is dope. Um, you know, growing up, you grew up in Utah, right? Yes, sir. What was Christmas like in the Heva family? Take me back, way back, when you were a young little guy, bro. So. Christmas, uh, Christmas in the, in my house. My parents didn't believe in presents. Mm. Well, they believed in presents, but like they um, always said that we had to give to to others. Yeah. And so, like you know, as a kid, you kind of like you you get that um, you know they're trying to they're trying to do nice things, but then it also sucks. <laughs> yeah. Because then because then like everybody at school was always like, man, we we got this, we got this, and then just like, oh, we didn't get <laughs> we didn't get nothing. Like a, a tradition my parents have is uh they always like to um to pick a family a family that we know that's either goes to our church or just um family friends of ours that they they know that we feel needs help yeah and then um each of us would go and get something for somebody in their family oh that's and nice and so yeah so so like they're really they're 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 they really love to do um, stuff like that, but it was it it was good um, learning that as a, uh, at a young age. But then at the same time, it was like, man, I can't get can't get what all these other kids are getting. Yeah, man. I mean, I feel like I there was I think there was Christmases where um, where we got gifts. Uh, our present, I mean, our parents gave us presents up until like a certain age. I'm not sure what the age was, but I know it was pretty young still. Then then it just stopped. So like all of us went through that cycle. So so at a certain age, how many family, how many siblings do you have? I got four brothers and I got two sisters. And so, where do you fall? Um, I'm the youngest boy. So there was my parents had five boys in a row, uh-huh. and I was the last boy. And then they had two little girls. And so I'm the, I'm the baby boy of the. Of the bunch, oh, but, but you're yeah. the big brother to the sisters. But the big brother to the sisters, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so having 
What's that? Uh, you say seven kids? Yeah, seven kids. Seven kids in a household. Yes, sir. During this time, I think it's it's cool that your parents were like, yeah. I mean, we we have a lot of kids our own self, but hey, let's let's help out our community. Let's help out members of yeah. our church. Let's help out people that we care about too. For sure, and I do admire them for that. Um, and so, and thank you, big thank you to them for teaching me that at a young age. Um, you know, try and um, make the most of the holiday season because it is a time where people. Um, some people ha- don't don't feel as loved as others, mm-hmm. and so uh, recognizing who those people might be and uh, giving them the Christmas they deserve. Uh, but then sometimes I was like, uh, "Man, is it just too many kids to <laughs> do, <laughs> do we just do we just have too many kids to uh, to give presents to?" Because I was like, "Y'all could just tell us straight up, you know." <laughs> so as you so as your parents are windling down, right? Because you said that at a certain age. The boys started not getting anything. Yeah, so was yeah. there ever an age where the girls st- didn't get nothing? Oh, that's a good question because I do remember a lot of Christmases where they got some <laughs> some presents, bro. So yeah, man, it, you know it might have been a little a little biased there. It might have been my dad. You know, it's, he's got the whole daddy's girl thing going on. I'm not gonna lie, I have one daughter. Yeah, and uh, she's my baby. She can't do no wrong. That's what I'm saying, man. It, it just and works I, won't, out that I, way. I guess I wouldn't understand until if I ha- have a daughter. That's so. right. You say if. Is that something that you want? You want to have a, a little baby? Yeah, man. Uh, that's that's the plan. Of course, me and my wife, we want to start our family. I mean, whenever on God's timing, whenever whenever we get blessed with the child. But yeah, um, but yeah, man. That's that's always the always the dream since uh since I was a kid to to um, have a family of my own. Um, I have a beautiful wife, mm-hmm. and so I'm glad that I do have a beautiful wife. And shout out to her. She's my motivation. She's my inspiration. Like we were just talking about before we started recording. Or I don't know if, if we were recording already, but yeah, man. It's just uh, I'm trying to make a lot of moves right now while I'm young to um, solidify a spot for um, or put my put my family, my future family in a better position. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so I can uh, give, but then also give my kids some presents when they grow up. So be, growing up in a, a family that uh, obviously was um, more giving, right? Giving yeah. and, and what what kind of um, servant leader or type of servant work would you want to teach your kids? Are there any traditions that your family, maybe it is picking a family and, and doing something nice for giving them dinner or something. Is there any traditions that you would want to do with your family? Yeah. Uh, well, so my mom's actually, she always, um, she always took us to our church, like, um, welfare square. Mm-hmm. And so they have the thing called the Bishop storehouse there where like, um, not even just members but like, of the church, but anybody could go and get a list. So they get, they get a shopping list from, uh, one of um, the leaders in the church, and then they take that shopping list, is, and it's just compiled of everything that um, they need for their household. Mm-hmm. You take that to the bishop storehouse during the holidays, and then they give you everything on the shopping list for free. Wow. And so we would go volunteer as the people that would go and grab the sh- shopping for them. So they show up, um, and so I think we did this every Christmas Eve, if I'm if I remember correctly. But yeah, my moms would take us every Christmas Eve, and we'd be there for about four to five hours in the morning, just get there early morning, um, wait there until um, they start, people started showing up with their lists. Um, and then they would, we, w- we would grab a cart for them and we would take, uh, we would walk around the store with them, grab everything that they need um, just cause they were just allowed to bring the list. And then we would just grab everything that they had um, selected. And so um, we did that for about four or five hours. Some of us would go to the back, pull s- stuff from the stock, bring it up, put it in the store but yeah, that's um that's a service that I always liked um about uh, my childhood. So I would definitely be down to do uh, to um instill that into um my f- future family. Yeah. So yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah. I didn't know that they did that. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's really I think it's really really dope. And I mean, if um, anybody listening could use that, I mean, it's a, it's available as a resource. So you just um, hit up anybody that you know um, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and then they um, they'll be able to get with the bishop, and then yeah, they just put together a list. Say, hey, this is what my family needs, especially during this holiday season. You know, you got a lot of mouths to feed, um, and then um, you just take that list and and take it straight to the bishop's. Storehouse. It is a freezing December day. Your coffee's brewing. You're trying to stay warm. You can smell the the holiday scents in the house. Grab your coffee, grab your hot cocoa, grab your beverage of choice, 
and I'll bring the stories. Hi, I'm Dre Rocker, and this is 12 Days of Podsmas. We'll be talking to some of your favorite people, getting to know what their childhood Christmas was like and what they're doing today. Listen daily with my dad and his friends for 12 Days of Christmas. Only here on Unrestricted. Did you uh, serve a mission? I did. Where at? So I served in Papua New Guinea. Well, how was, do they, this might be a silly question. Do they celebrate Christmas in New Guinea? Uh, yeah, they, they do, but it's, uh, it's, it's always hot. So it was definitely different from, from the Christmas that I knew. Yeah. But, um, I mean, as far as them celebrating Christmas, it's just like get together, sing and eat, dance. It's a lot, it's a whole lot of that. Uh, when I was on my mission, actually, we would put together a show. Um, us missionaries, there's about 50 of us. We'd put together a, a show called Light the World, oh. and then um, we would invite the whole city. So we would invite the whole city, and they'd come. It, it would literally be like four to 500 people on our church lawn just oh sitting my. there watching us. And so, you know, you ever seen those Samoans spin the fire, yeah. fire knife? One of my boys, he was a fire knife dancer in Hawaii at the Polynesian Cultural Center. And so he was putting on a whole show there and the people were going wild because, you know, they never seen stuff like yeah. that. And then so we, we would put on we would put we would put on some dances from each of our individual cultures because most of us were from Tonga, Samoa, Fiji. I um, mean, then all the all the other Pacific Islands islands because uh, they don't allow any white people out there in New and, Guinea. Yeah. It, um, it's the, the church just doesn't send any any out there because uh-huh. they're um, they're they're an easier target um, yeah. for for the people. The people um, haven't really liked white people for a long time, and so right now it's still they're still living in third world mm-hmm. um, circumstances, and so like it's really crazy out there. Um, they got tribes going to war and stuff, and people are getting kidnapped, tourists and stuff. Oh, so wow. it's just a dangerous uh, place to be, and so um, yeah. But during during Christmas, it, it was it was a it was a good time to just you know look past look past all that, invite whoever have like just have it be free for whoever wanted to come and just enjoy a, a show with their with their family because they don't really get that out there so what um when you were in new guinea um did you learn their language i did what what kind of language do they have so, so they speak pigeon um it's not hawaiian pigeon no it's not hawaiian p- uh, pigeon but it translates to tokpisin is what they call it in um in papua new guinea so it's really similar to to english um i i think if i'm right i mean i might I might be wrong, but um, I was told um, that the Australians actually made the language for the Papua New Guineans because mm-hmm. they couldn't make their own language. And so, well, they have like other like l- individual languages in their tribes, in their villages yeah. that's specific to that village or that tribe. But the general language that's spoken wherever you go is Tokpisin. And so it sounds like this. It's like, um, so say, if I was to say good morning, uh, I'd be like, good morning. Good plan morning, and they always roll their R, so it's good plan morning, Dre, or something like that, you know? Good, good plan morning? Good plan. So, good plan. Good, good plan. So good it's like pla. you're saying good, like good? Yeah. And then putting pla at the end. And that's that's how they count, too. So you put one pla, two pla, three pla, four pla. Ah. So, yeah, pla is just like a, I don't know, it's a really common thing that they use in their Do language. You, you say pla after each word? No, not after each word. It's only certain ones. So good plan morning, um, and then like... So what I say... Merry Pla Christmas? Nah, they just say Merry Mer- Christmas Pla? Yeah. No, they just say Merry Christmas. Nah, I like Merry Christmas Pla. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he over here making up words. Yeah, man. no, my bad. No disrespect, New Guineans. <laughs> nah, no, Is it New Guinean? New Guineans? You know how we're Utahns? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah New yes. Guineans. Yep, New Guineans. So did, do uh, they have uh, Santa Claus? Like, did they have decorations in New Guinea? Uh, they did, surprisingly. Yeah, they had some areas with lights. Did they? Um, ha- hold on, here's the real question. Did they have a... Uh, a brown or a black <laughs> Santa Claus? No, or they, they got no, rid of the white Santa Claus. <laughs> no, they they just had a white Santa Claus. Oh, okay, so they yeah. allow Santa Claus. So they allow Santa Claus. He's he, he's he's invited. He's invited to the barbecue. Okay, man. okay. Yeah. Santa Claus gets a pass. He, he, yeah, he's invited to the cookout. <laughs> when you were uh, when you're doing this talent show, what are you doing? Are you singing? Are you dancing? What 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 did was, you contribute? So I was the the choir um, director or whatever. See, so yeah, I put together a choir of missionaries and then. I would just lead them in singing. You were the Whippy Goldberg? Yeah, man, that was me. I was out there like this. <laughs> joyful, joyful, yeah, joy Lord. to the world. Bro, I was doing all of that, bro. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, and then just dancing here and there. But, yeah, it was so fun. Actually, they had me MC the whole show. Nice. So, um, were you nervous? Uh, Speaking in front of all those people? Not not really. At that at that point, I, was, I had already been out for about a year. 
Uh, yeah, I was I was I was already out for about a year, so I had the language down pretty good to where I felt uh, comfortable. I mean, and I'm not really a shy person when it um uh, when I'm in public, and so so uh, it was it was it was it was uh, it was more fun than anything for me. So, what kind of food were you making, or what kind of food were were you eating? So on we had Christmas? because we had like all Islander um, elders out there, yeah, and we had we had missionaries straight from the islands. So we had like sh- just straight Tongan, straight um, Samoans that were just that came straight from the islands. So they did a lot of um, umus, and it's where they um, they dig a big old hole in the ground, and then they'll um, put some hot rocks in there, and then um, inside some banana leaves or like a cage or something, they'll put the meat, and then they'll put some like sweet potatoes, yams, or what kind of meat are we talking? Oh, it's okay. So we're talking some like um CP so it's like sh- sheep lamb mm. um and then um some pig Oof. uh yeah we're we're putting pig um uh, pig in that thing and then there was probably some chicken Gotta chicken have here some and there. chicken in there yeah so that was those were probably the main three and then we had some like uh, little red sausages um they don't have them here in the states but yeah they're like they're like that that big and they're bro they're amazing bro so you just throw all of not those not like hot not hot links no nah. okay no nah. so just they're just I don't even know they have them in New Zealand too, but they don't. I've never seen them here in the states. But uh, um, yeah, so we just threw all of that together, um, it, just in like this big old cage looking thing, and then we put that um, under um, under all that heat covered. I mean, so we put like a tarp, some some leaves on top of it, so that the heat coming up is trapped um, inside that hole, mm. and then everything's cooking in there, bro. You would be surprised about uh, how amazing that thing tasted how long are we roasting this thing for a few does hours a few okay. hours bro yeah I'm not, i mean i don't know a certain how, how how many hours to be exact is this somebody's backyard where is this at where you guys is, digging this, the hole yeah this was at the chapel this is at the church oh so, at the church yeah this is bishop it. let you do all that yeah man <laughs> uh, it was our it was our mission president's idea he actually he actually went and designated a spot just for umus so is is umus am i saying that right yeah, umus, yeah. is that is that is that just an everyday Tuesday kind of meal, or is that nah, specific? Man, that's, that's special holiday? event. Uh-huh. Okay, that's like any huge gatherings of the mission. Every time we got together, it's umu. Um, yeah, anything else going on? Holidays? Yeah, just big old gatherings, special occasions. Who's leading the prayer before you eat? Um, just whoever whoever our mission president selects. Okay, honestly, yeah. Did you ever do that? Um. Maybe I don't really remember. Yeah, I don't remember, man. You know when it's time to eat, nobody cares oh, yeah. who's praying. It's just say amen already, bro. <laughs> I yeah. get it. Thank you for the food. <laughs> Thank Let's you, scrub. Hallelujah, man. I was over there picking at the food while the prayer is going on. Any desserts? Um, nah, they they weren't huge on desserts desserts out there. Mm. They didn't have uh, they don't have many desserts to begin with. Yeah. Um, I remember I went with my companions. Um, we went to we went to like the. The grocery store trying to get some cake mixes but the cake mixes are like five like seven bucks or something out wow. there yeah so so they're because they're so expensive man we hardly bake cakes or ate any cakes they did have these cream bun things though so it's like a roll yeah okay and and then the it's a roll and then it's split open and then in the middle of it it's just a ton of cream mm. yeah it's just like a ton of sweet cream and then they sometimes they had like this i don't know it's like it's like a ch- some Raspberry, raspberry feeling or something, but okay, it was amazing. You know, um, one I think it's a Polynesian dish, um, that I love. It's the uh, the sweet bread with the coconut cream on the bottom. Oh, you're talking about Bonnie Popo? Bonnie Popo, yeah, bro. So it's a Polynesian dish, right? Yeah, yeah, it's so a Samoan good. one, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, my my dad makes a really good Bonnie Popo, mm. but yeah, man, that you're Tongan, though, right? Yeah, oh, okay, yes, sir. What does what does Tonga or what do Tongans have that's kind of like this is our dessert? Um, probably fika kai. What's that? Um, it's like a, it's kind of like pieces of bread, um, that are like they have this type of sauce that's over it. It looks like caramel, but it's not. They call it lolo. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to really um describe it, but yeah, that's basically what it is. Just like bread with sauce over it. Mm. It's it's amazing, bro. Delicious. Yeah. Is that a is that kind of like a, a special occasion kind of dish? Uh. Yeah, that's 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 a special occasion dish. My grandma would make it. Um, sometimes she would just make it like on a regular Tuesday too. So, but um, every time Tongans get together, actually, I don't even know if it's just a Tongan thing. The Samoans might have their own version of it, but mm. um, but I do know that that's that's one big thing that I loved growing up. 
What what was uh did you guys have a Christmas dinner like on Christmas? Did you guys do like a Christmas Eve with your family? Uh, it was always just um we we wouldn't do dinner. Um, it was always just like around lunchtime. Okay. So, but I mean, it, there was like dinner dinner type of food there on Christmas Day. Yeah, on Christmas Day. But like, yeah, I don't really remember ever actually like um getting together at night. Like every time we got together as a family and ate, mm-hmm. it was. Um, we all got together, talked in the morning. If there were any presents, then that was when, you know, obviously they were open. But then it was always just like lunchtime is when was when that, that eating happened. Take me through at the Heva house. It's Christmas morning. Are you guys, do you guys, do you run straight to your gifts and rip them open? Do you wait for the family to wake up? Are you the last one awake? Um, who's, the, who's always the one that trickles down into the living room? Um, I think my parents were usually there first. Um, I don't really remember like any of us kids racing to the to the tree because there wasn't usually anything under there. Yeah, but maybe like the Christmas or two that I do remember, it was uh, a lot of um, excitement the the night before. Mm-hmm. Knowing like because I mean they wouldn't wait till we went to sleep and put the tree the presents under the tree. If if we had the the years that we did have presents, I remember they were just out there like they would just go buy them, wrap them up, and then just put them put them under the tree so we already knew that it was, oh, gonna, it was there so gotcha. but a lot of excitement um on christmas eve and then i do remember getting up um probably just not even brushing my teeth just running straight to the living room mm-hmm. seeing what was going on but yeah it was using my parents just sitting there waiting for us most of the time did you uh when do you guys usually put up your christmas tree um christmas tree always went up after thanksgiving you well some 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 years it was before but yeah most of the time after is it a real tree, fake tree? No, nah, it was always fake, bro. You never I, got out there and cut down one? No, nah, I don't remember ever getting uh I don't ever remember us getting one of those real ones. I think it was too much work for us. I ain't gonna lie, that is a lot of work. My dad, he uh he would go to a, tr- a Christmas tree lot and this dude was just like a genius and knew these trees. He's like, <laughs> "Oh, that's a spruce. That's the whatever whatever." And he's like, "Yeah, that's the this one, even though it's small, it's a hundred and something bucks. It's because it's this this special type of tree no that's gonna way. last forever. It's from the Alps of Oregon and things like that. And, and shout out Pops, yeah, man. He it, knew what was going on. Oh, he knows. That's crazy. Um, but it, and then it, it just became uh, a lot, right? So then we end up transitioning to getting a fake one. Yeah. Which right now, I mean, I think growing up in the eighties uh, and nineties, it was all about having that smell, right? But now we have artificial smells that we can just buy. Facts. Yeah, so. my wife she had one of those things uh, last year on our little tree because we had a we had our own little spot boat, so we just got a mini tree. But she had one of those, and I never seen them before. Where um, yeah, it has this, the smell of the tree on it. I was like, what the? But are you uh, are you in the kitchen um, cooking up that Christmas? Definitely not, brother. No, nope. Who's I, who's in the kitchen? Uh, it was it was always my it was always my pops uh, and my mom um, there. They're usually up there. Most of the time it was my mom, my grandma, my aunties. Um, now, I mean, re- since I got married, Christmas is different. It's, it's always my mother-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, my wife, and, and her sisters. And so, um, yeah, because, you know, I got different families uh, now that I, that I spend Christmas with. And so yeah. it is cool, though, to, too, to see, like, the difference um, in how we celebrate compared to how my, my wife's family celebrates. But, um, yeah, it's just uh, – Christmas is just amazing, bro, all the way around. It doesn't matter where you go, who you're with. It's always just going to be a good time. Yeah, I think it's it brings out that family. Even if we're not family, it feels like family, right? Yeah, facts. You Hopefully, you're not spending it alone. You know what I mean? Hopefully, you have friends that invite you if you're alone on holidays. Because right. this is, like you mentioned earlier, man, this is a time where people can get depressed. Yeah, but Christmas is what you make it, man. Yeah. And it's, uh, so there's, if, you, if you're looking to have a good time, if you're looking to go home, um and if and be with your family then you know that's always going to be a good time but if if you're if you're out um working if you if shout out to those that work on mm. christmas too man yeah. and people that are are far away from home on christmas man that's that's got to be tough mm-hmm. um but making the most out of what they can with their their colleagues wherever they're at you know yeah. shout out to them too man so christmas did, but yeah it's 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 just a good time did you ever attend any uh christmas uh like formals in high school or anything like that? Did you guys ever have like a Christmas dance? Uh, not that I can remember. You went to West, didn't you? Yeah, I went to West. They had to have had a Christmas formal or something. I think they I think they did. I don't think I ever went to them, though. 
<laughs> you didn't want to attend no no uh, school functions. Uh, I was. I mean, I went to I went to some uh, some stuff here and there, but um, yeah, I don't really remember any like Christmas uh, Christmas dances. Honestly, I do. What I do remember is like uh, Christmas dances for my my church. Mm. My church is always, was always throwing on uh, these little get-togethers and dances. So my um, I was I was always over there with uh, with my brothers and my family. Did you perform a lot? Did they ever ask you to perform in the oh yeah church choir and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I got asked to do some some solos, uh, sing some Christmas songs. I still remember um, dressed up as like a um, one of the wise men, and I was singing a little solo on stage. But that's dope. Yeah, so those are good memories, man. Good how memories? How does one? Because I, I think about the. Um, the church, the big church choir. What's it called? The Tabern- the ta- Tabernacle Choir. Yeah, that. I think they changed their name now. It's like uh, Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square or something like that. They changed it. Have you ever tried to go out for that? Oh, definitely not, bro. There, you know how hard it is to get into there. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I don't bro, know. They're, so, because they're one of the world's like they're a world renowned choir, and so it, their tryouts are insane. And so, have you tried out? Nah, um, nah, I wouldn't even try. And so, why? And and, and actually, uh, <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the people that are on there, they're like, it, it's a ton of old people and stuff. And so <laughs> may, maybe <laughs> maybe when I re, maybe when I retire, I might you know I might mess around and do it. Well, Heva, they changed the name. Maybe they'll change the age range. No, nah, I, I know there's probably not no age range. <laughs> I just can't see myself with a bunch of uh, with a bunch of old people right now. <laughs> I'll, I'm I'm gonna jo- I'm gonna join them later on in life, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, in death. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Uh, People, your family's watching. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> So Heva, let's jump into what's that noise? All right, let's do this it. This is a this is a moment where you get a chance to win some money. Ooh-wee. If you don't win it, um, somebody at home can win it. Uh, Lord knows I need the money, man. Let's get it. And all you need to do is tell me what the noise is. All right, three eight five two four zero forty six sixty six is the number. If you want to get your guesses in, this is for fifty bucks. Heva, tell me what this noise 50 is. Fifty bucks. Hmm. You want to hear it again? Yeah, one more time, one more time. That's mm. a that's a candy wrapper, bro. Three eight five two four zero forty six sixty six is the number. Get your guesses in for what's that noise? I'm gonna play it one more time. Ah, uh, so one I was more time. wrong. One more time. Hmm. What is that noise, Heva? 50 bucks is on the line, Heva. 50 bucks, 50 bucks. What is that noise? I'm going to say it's a receipt being crumbled up. Mm. It's crumbled up like your dreams about being in the choir. Nah. (laughs) That is wrong. That is wrong. That is not the answer. You said crumble up rapper. What else did you say? You said open up a piece of candy. I said, open up a piece of candy. That Little, is, third, third time's a charm. Third time's a charm, Dre. <laughs> I get one more try? One more try. You want to hear it first? Yeah, one more time. Okay. 385-240-4666 is the number two. Get your guesses in. The heck is that? Mm. <laughs> it's a really good one. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Presence opening. That is not right. Dang it. Get your guesses in. 385-240-4666 is the number. I'm going to play for you afterwards, Waldo. I want to see if you can get it. Now, you being a, a, a musical artist, a musician... I figure, yo, let's take a look at some Christmas trivia. Okay, bet. Almost like some did you know kind of things. All right, I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of stuff wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, there's it's not really like a right or wrong. Oh, okay, this is just like a, you know, all right, fun facts, I guess you would say. Oh, I'll bet. So, uh, all I want for Christmas is you. We all know that song, right? Right. Sold Carrie. a bunch of records, right? Mm-hmm. Did you know that it was written in 15 minutes? 
15 no minutes way. 15 minutes bro that's like one of the most um sold songs in history in history now here's uh, the here's the kicker how do you write a song that's so iconic for a holiday outside of that holiday she wrote it in august the heat the the, the top of the summer wow wrote it in august got inspired wrote it um also here's another did you know faith hill the song where, where are you christmas right very famous song it was written by mariah carey as well dang so mariah's think about that end game is different man and she's getting paid off of that that's crazy those royalties man every every christmas yep Ooh. and it charts too out of nowhere like yo november december that song's charting oh on the yeah. billboard 100 just it's, crazy it's it's just sitting on there the whole the whole holiday season bro yeah it's like okay here's doja cat beyonce drake oh mariah carey she hasn't dropped an album in 20 years, but hey, she's still charting. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Those royalties are crazy. It's pretty cool. Dang, but that you're right, man. Writing a, a Christmas song in August is tough. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I have any every Christmas song I've ever written has, has always been um, like late October and November. Mm. So, I mean, that's it, it, it's what the seasons change. Yeah. Right. Uh, another thing about where we uh, where are you Christmas? Um, she was actually going to write it. Mariah Carey was going to write it. But her ex-husband, Tommy Matola. Uh, give it to Faith instead. So wow. that could have been sung by Mariah. That's crazy. Insane. Okay. Um, when Brenda Lee recorded Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, another famous uh, Christmas mm -hmm. song, in 1958, guess how old she was? 12. Close. 13. Dang. Think about that song. Rockin' Around the Christmas, Christmas Tree. tree. Yeah. Yeah, bro. What? She was only 13 years old. And she's hitting those notes. And that, that melody is iconic, too. Oh, yeah. Very much, I, I think, of New York, wow. right? I think about the old New York, Sinatra. Bro, I think about, yeah, like Christmas movies, bro, like uh, Home Alone. Yeah. Shh. Absolutely. You know where that was filmed? Home Alone? Yeah. Where? Chicago. Oh, oh Illinois. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Jingle Bells is over 150 years old. Did you know that? No way. Guess when it was published. Um, it's over 100 years old. 18 something. 1870. Eh, kind of close. 1857. Jeez. Crazy to think that that song. And here's another thing. Do you know what that song was intended for? What? Thanksgiving. That song was supposed to be a Thanksgiving song. Jingle Bells? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yeah, it was intended to be a, a Thanksgiving song. Jingle Bells come out on Thanksgiving? I don't know when it came out. Oh, but no, but like, do people use the uh, Jingle Bells? Nah. I don't really see them like up for decoration or anything. Mm -mm. Nah. Interesting. Christmas hijacked it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, the, I forget this guy's name. His name is Thorough Raven Scroft, I believe is how we pronounce it. He's saying, You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, right? Yeah. Do you know who else he was the voice of? Very famous character. You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. The um, guy that sang that song. Who else did he voice that was very famous? I don't know, man. It's kind of crazy, man. Tony the Tiger for 50 years. No way. They're great. Yeah. No way. <laughs> Insane, right? Wow. Pretty cool. Dang, I remember those commercials, bro. Those used to cringe me. <laughs> Were you a serial kid go growing up? Uh, yeah, definitely. I was like Apple Jacks. Mm. Um, what else did I like? <sighs> Fruity Pebbles. Okay. Yeah, bro. Very basic. Cinnamon Toast Ooh, Crunch. Fire. Okay. And then they had like these little cookie ones. I forgot that came out. I like cookie those too. crisp. Cookie crisps, yeah, yeah. Those those used to be um, one of the go tos, but right now it's uh, honey bunches of oats mm, with what milk? Um, almond milk because mm. my wife gets almond milk. Yes. I never, never, I never drank almond milk till I met her. But um, I have to. I'm lactose intolerant, so it's like. <laughs> and Cheerios, they got these cinnamon Cheerios now, and they got like little oats in them. <sighs> Amazing. My wife put me on. Did you ever do um, uh, not cornflakes, but fr uh. Shred, not shredded wheat. What's the other cornflake? Um, the healthy one, the quote unquote healthy one. 
Uh, not shredded wheat. What's it came with raisins in it sometimes? Oh heck no, raisin bran or whatever that. Was. Yeah, raisin bran. Bro, my wife likes that. No, mm. I would never, bro. It's delicious. I, I hate raisins. Really? How you like raisins, bro? I love raisins. By it's themselves, not in my potato salad bro, the, or anything. The texture and everything Don't. is just weird, oh, no, bro. That's good. Cho- uh, cho- dark chocolate covered cranberries. Ugh. <sighs> nah, bro. Mwah. I think there's a uh, there's the. People that uh, like raisins are special, man. <laughs> spe- special breed. Well, you said your wife likes them, right? Yeah, well, man. See, she's a special woman. She is special, man. Let I me just, be. I can't do it, man. Your wife, she's a trainer, right? She does. Yeah. She does a lot of fitness and stuff. Yep. Shout out to her and her Instagrams, Coco Olive or Olive Fit. Well, we weren't Sorry. looking for the plug, Heva. So, uh, Come on, <laughs> hey, so Heva said, "I'm gonna get the plug no matter what." <laughs> uh, you guys go check check it check her uh, her her stuff out. Y'all go get fit, man. Were you uh were you into fitness before meeting your wife? No, definitely not, bro. Definitely not. I was uh, I still am a sugar addict, bro. Mm. I have like it's le- a legitimate addiction, bro. Mm. Like I can't I can't go a day without eating like cookies and if i and if i eat something sweet i gotta eat the whole package in one sitting i have to bro i have to i know the feeling I'm trying try not to but well you're doing good man there's two packages of donuts behind you and you didn't well you bro, didn't flinch if you if you didn't notice man i was actually like gonna reach over there and open it up but then like i was like man this is kind of this kind of awkward if i just open his uh donuts but you just you know, start snacking on the donuts uh. <laughs> i gotta wait till we're off camera bro <laughs> <laughs> She'll never know. <laughs> nah, I'm just gonna uh, blackmail you and just send her the the video. That's what I'm like, saying, man. <laughs> nah, but yeah, but she she, uh, she keep she keep me healthy, man. She tries to tell me I need to I need to chill out when I'm uh, I be going too crazy with the sugar. I feel yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's a great th- great thing to have, man. She's looking out for you. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Irving Berlin wrote the song "White Christmas" and hated Elvis Presley. Uh, the Elvis Presley version so much that he tried to get it banned from the radio. Wow. So the guy that wrote White Christmas, he seen that Elvis Presley performed it. He hated it and was like, yo, get this off the radio. Wow. They were, shoot, they were on some Ella Man, Jacquees type mm-hmm. uh, beef, huh? Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's crazy. It's pretty cool, man. It, think about as as much time has changed, things haven't changed. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, man. I don't know, man. I don't think um, I would ever be salty over somebody doing a cover of my song, and even if it did better than than my original, bro. But what if it sucks? What if you wrote a song and the dude oh, performing it sucked, and you I, did not yeah, like I, it? I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like you wrote the song Island Boy, right? But then those guys from the Island Boy they came out. <laughs> I'm Island Boy. It's like, dog, I didn't write it like that. Like, what are you doing? Facts, facts. Because then it's then you just feel disrespected. Yeah. All right, all right. I see where he's coming yeah, from. White Christmas, man. Yes, sir. Got it off of ra- got Come it off on, the Elvis. Radio. <laughs> yeah, Elvis. Rest in peace, I guess. Hey. Uh, Silver Bells was originally called what? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Tinkle Bell. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. What the freak? <laughs> yeah, so Silver Bells was originally Tinkle called Tinkle Bells. Tinkle Bells. Tinkle Bells. Wow. It's Twinkle Time in the City. So the writer changed it after his wife mentioned the double meaning of the word Tinkle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm glad he did that, man. <laughs> Shout out to his wife. Yeah, you can't just be walk think about you performing in front of a, a crowd of people singing Twinkle Bells. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. I don't even think it would have uh gotten to where it's at right now if it had that. Yeah, no. Tinkle Bells, get it Probably out of here. Not. All right. Next one. Did you <laughs> do you hear what I hear? Was actually written as a call for peace during what war? Well, not really a war. But a conflict. The, the Cold War? Nope. During the Cuban missile missile crisis in 1962. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, do you if you listen to that song, you could probably listen to it a little bit differently now. Call for peace. You know what I mean? That's what we need right now. We need you need to call for peace for uh, uh, our, uh was it uh, Russia and our uh, Ukraine? Right. Ukraine, man. I stand with Ukraine. Damn. Okay. Eartha Kit did a follow up to Santa Baby, right? Santa okay. Baby, Eartha Kit, right? The follow up, uh, or the following year, called "This Year's Santa Baby." The song was, uh, let's see, it was the same song with different lyrics, and it flopped big time. 
As it should, man. You can't. How do you follow? You can't just make a sequel. Yeah, you don't do no follow up, bro. Let Santa Baby live. Right. It's but like some, it's like some of the movies they try and make, man. Like just let the, just let that character be where be. Just let it let him chill where he was at, man. They be trying to add too much. I'm speaking of the new Black Panther, bro, because I didn't like it, bro. <laughs> Are you serious? I haven't watched it, but I always hear good. I hear I've heard great things. Yeah, it, like the story and everything was cool, but then like when uh when they I feel like they just they just try to force it too much to pass in the Black Panther to his sister. Mm. Like man, they should just let T'Challa die with it, man. Well, just let Eva, it be. Uh, how about you uh, hit us with a spoiler alert before you say all that? <laughs> Some of us haven't seen the movie, uh, so uh, y'all don't have to go watch the movie no more, bro. <laughs> Take my word for it, man. Are you a are you a big comic book guy? Nah, nah. I mean, I've I've always been into the Marvel movies, but I, I don't I don't follow it like that because I know people that do. Like my brother, my brother, he's uh yeah, he knows the whole Marvel universe in and out. But I, yeah, I like the movies. What uh what's your favorite Marvel movie? If you were to give me your top five, like Dre, I've I've, I've never seen a Marvel movie ever. I don't know what's going on in this universe. What five movies would you tell me to go watch? Okay, uh, I'm putting Avengers, um, like the very first Avengers. I don't uh, that one. That one's like my all time favorite. Um, probably kind I of throw, a cheat code. I mean, you get all of them in one movie. Yeah, kind of a cheat code. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> well that that one that one's just that's one that I I remember like almost every scene too. So that was one of my favorite growing up. Very first one, um, the Spider Man, Spider Man with Tobey Maguire. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the like that that older one. Um, very first Black Panther, I like that one a lot too. Um, and one of the Iron Man movies, I don't remember which one, but um, he's like on a racetrack and he's like fighting this dude that has like these crazy arms. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot I forgot which one it is, but that one for sure. And then Captain America. Okay. Yes, sir. Was it the first one no, or Winter Soldier? I mean, um, Winter Soldier. Okay. Yeah, Winter Soldier's bad. Yeah, Captain America, Winter Soldier. I didn't like the first Captain America. Yeah, that that one was it was it was all right. It was all right, like his whole transformation and everything. I did, I just didn't like um, the whole uh, conflict story of that one. Yeah. But I th- I thought it was cool to see uh, like his origin story. I like the Guardians too. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. He. What's his name? Um. I forgot what his name is. The one that walks around with the Walkman. Oh, um, Lord, uh, what's his Lord name? Lord something. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, but he's his character's dope. Yeah, Ant Man too. Ant Man slept on. Ant Man, I can't, I can, I could never get into. It. You the, didn't like the Paul Rudd movies, bro? Ah, uh, not really, bro. I, but I could never get into those to that series, man. They got a new one coming out though. Mm-hmm. I seen it's like coming out next in a few months. Yeah. So I'm, maybe maybe if I watch that one, I'll be I'll be a fan. Okay, here's a little last little. Uh, did you know, the Roman Catholic Church condemned the song in 1952. I saw Mama kissing Santa Claus because they thought it pro- uh, promoted adultery. They backed off 13 minutes, uh, or they backed off the 13 year old <laughs> singer Jimmy Boyd uh, that explained that Santa is in reality the kid's dad. <laughs> So they were like, yo, this is bad. This is adultery. <laughs> Chill. And he was like, yo, it's it's okay. Santa Claus is my father. They're <laughs> married. Uh, I think it's kind of self explanatory that Yeah, I thought like I thought everybody knew that. I well, guess I not. guess I guess I guess some some people could take it take it that way. Yeah. Wow. That, that's crazy. Would you ever dress up like Santa Claus? Would I? Yeah. Um Yeah, for fun. Why not? Yeah. Get you a nice little belly. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you some, some questions, right? And you have to tell me if this is C or not C. Meaning, is this Christmas worthy or not Christmas? Okay. okay? Sending out Christmas cards. Um... No C. Everybody hates that sh- that stuff. Really? Man. Yeah, man. Like, do people really like receiving Christmas cards, bro? Because every time, like, my family got one, bro, we just threw that away. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you you go through all this to make Christmas cards that nobody cares about, bro. Oh, like, man. just yeah, I don't know. You 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 just don't like mail, huh? Uh, no. Nah. Like, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying Christmas cards not C? 
Nah, man, just okay. post something on your story now. Where I like, <laughs> just say Merry Christmas, everybody. Put it on your put it on your story, man. Everybody will see it that way. Okay, Waldo, make sure you burn the Christmas card. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> there was fifty bucks yeah, in that exactly. thing. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> um. Bring in fruitcake to the Christmas function. Ah, oh, fruitcake's disgusting, bro. Don't bring any of that around me. <laughs> <laughs> no C, bro. I haven't had it yet. I haven't uh, had it. It's terrible, bro. F- fruits, cake, nah, man. I, well, for me, personally, yeah. I say no C. I still haven't met anybody that has said, hey, it's okay, or it's delicious. Nobody has. I've asked many people this question. Fruitcake is terrible, bro. <laughs> I'm and I'm like I said I'm I'm a, I'm a sugar addict so I know <laughs> I know my I know my desserts bro I know my desserts and I would not I would not eat that even if it was the last dessert in the world Oh my gosh okay I'll be sure to buy two <laughs> <laughs> See so fruit uh Christmas fruit cake not 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 see Okay um not wrapping the gift um mm. like just just you're giving your wife a gift and you just hand her over the target oh, bag. Oh, bro, that's not C, bro. You gotta wrap it. Gotta wrap it. That's the whole. That just. That's like the takes away the element of surprise. Takes away the whole meaning of the gift, man. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why your parents never. They're just like, yo, you, you know what this is, right? I'm gonna wrap it, but hey, just act surprised. Yeah, maybe that's why. Maybe it's because I'm traumatized, and so like I, I always want. I want to. I want to be surprised. Did you ever uh, put the gift in something else to throw the person off? Um, like, yes, yes, I've done that before. Where, you know, they have like those, uh, what is it called, white elephant? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we we did that at uh, for our family one time. I just put boxes and boxes and boxes. No, it wasn't my family. It was um, it was on my mission, and that poor missionary that got my gift, bro, he ended up opening all these boxes just to find toothpaste. Oh. <laughs> But I, I I went I went and gave him some cash after. But, That's messed up. But it, it was it was it was funny, man. <laughs> I'd be so bad. Take my time. My uh, one year, my dad he cut a hole in the middle of a phone book. Back in the day, he would we get these things on our front porch called a phone book. Phone book. Yep, it's very thick and it has everybody in the city's phone numbers in it. Yeah. If you want a plumber, you can find oh, a plumber. Oh, okay, okay. No, I, I seen I seen <laughs> maybe maybe one. They were called the yellow pages. Okay? okay. So big thick book, right? And my dad cut a hole in the middle of it. And he put my gift in there. No way. Wrapped it up. And when I opened it up Christmas morning. You threw away the I was phone like, book. Yo, I got a phone book. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. You got to open it up. And then I got like some socks in it or there something. There we go. Yeah. That's how you do it. So we got to wrap our gifts, right? Yeah. Got okay. to. Make sure you wrap them. Don't be. Definitely. A weirdo. Okay. Um, peeking at your gifts before Christmas. Mm. For you, you might not have this issue because you already knew what it was. <laughs> um. Nah, man, you get. I'm all about the element of surprise. That's not C, bro. You gotta, you gotta wait, man. You gotta, you gotta wait, and then just yeah, embrace the moment, man. Mm-hmm. Why ruin the moment? Exactly. Don't ruin it. Don't peek at your gifts. Don't ruin it, bro. That's Have where patience. memories are made. Okay, mm-hmm. so you build a gingerbread house with your family. All right, you build one up. It's nice. You got the icing. Got gumdrops on the on the ceiling and whatnot on the roof, and then you eat it a couple days later. So eating the gingerbread house. Oh, I see, bro. Uh, man, I'm always gonna eat Ew. the. I'm always gonna eat that thing, man. The ginger, the, the gingerbread house that's been sitting out for a week. Uh, me, me personally, <laughs> probably, bro. <laughs> like it depends on. What, yeah, wait, I forgot you're a sugar addict. I yeah, forgot. It depends on what's like what what's on the the gingerbread house. Like I seen, uh, I seen that they're. Um, Oreos putting out like their own little gingerbread house um, kit, mm. but it's like made out of cakes. And so, like, like that, I'm killing it, bro. I don't okay. care how long it's sitting now. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Have you? Uh, when's the last time you made a gingerbread house? Shoot, probably when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe you I, should do one this year. I know. I was telling my wife, but she wasn't really digging it. But she's like, sugar, no. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's maybe that's why she said. Maybe that's why she wasn't digging it. She'll get you kale chips. You guys yeah, can make a, a kale house. And we're gonna make it out of uh, protein. There you go. Protein powder. <laughs> it's like a sandcastle. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, your wife's going to kill you when you go home. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> okay, so you're saying eating gingerbread house, that's C. I don't agree with it, but that's what you say. Um, yes. Okay. That's C for me. All right. Uh, going to the Christmas function, but not wearing anything festive. If you're, you're getting invited to a Christmas party, 
But you ain't got an ugly sweater on You ain't got a Santa hat You ain't got no nothing on Oh man You just wearing a pro club and some dickies I think that's not C But I was one of those dudes that showed up with uh, Just like some khakis on Oh yeah I, I, I never really had a, like an ugly Christmas sweater um, but I think recently, recently I have been like maybe the past few years. Yeah, I think I've been showing up with some, uh, with something Christmas or something festive on. Okay, I'll give you a pass today. Cause, I mean, because you got the red and the green. Yeah, bro. On. See, that's why. That's why it's I wore a, this. It's a little bit Christmassy. You know what I'm saying? Has nothing to do with yeah. Christmas, but okay. Go with, go with the <laughs> campeón. <laughs> oh, it is campeón. I was like, oh, okay, it's yes, Chevy. You know, Mexico lost, right? Oh no, I didn't, bro. I haven't been uh, keeping up with the World Cup, honestly. Mm-hmm. Hey, why was uh, I, I was a uh, I was it was recent. I was at Valley Fair Mall, and all the Samoans were going crazy. Oh, because they made it to the grand final for the Rugby World Cup. Mm. Yeah, man. Did yeah. they win? Shout out to Tall Samoa, man. No, they lost to um, they lost to Australia. Uh, Australia is like the they they've been the big dogs for for years. But it's the first. I thought it was New Zealand. That it was all blacks. Uh, yeah. It's always it's always between them, but. Mm. For for the most part, it's been Australia recently, but um, yeah, no no small Pacific island has made it to that stage, bro. So that's why wow. they were going crazy. And so shout out to all the Samoans, man. I I know a lot of Samoan people. I got a lot of Samoan friends, but they were that was really a time where they just uh, there was a lot of pride, man. Yeah, that's got got to be proud, man. If we if we made it to um, if uh, Tonga made it that far, because they took us out. Mm. Yeah, they beat Tonga, and then they beat um, England. And so you, and that's a, you're talking about a small island, you know, compared to England and Australia, which are these huge powerhouses mm-hmm. and they have millions and millions of people to, to choose from like superstars to come play for them. Right. Well, I would even say money too. That's what I'm saying. Money. And, and they just, there's, there's actually Samoan and Tongan players that play in England. Um, like besides, um, that's different from the world cup. Mm. Um, they have they play for teams there, but they left those teams and went and played to represent their their homelands, man. And so it's always dope to see that happening, huh? Is that every how how often is that? I think it's what like every three years or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, so. so that's why yeah, this is a big, it's not like they get next year to try. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's it's a huge thing, man. Well, man, congratulations to Samoa for yeah, making it that far. To, to Samoa, man. All right. Uh, let's see where are we at. Uh, let's do oh flocking a tree. Do you know what that is? Never heard of it, bro. What is Am it? I say I need to double check because every time I say flocking, everybody's like, "What the?" Hey, somebody what check on that? somebody. Fact check Dre. <laughs> Dre. Man. He <laughs> might he might be over here making up something, man. So growing up, uh, you would go to the Christmas tree lot and they would spray it with white fake snow, and that's what they call flocking. So having the fake tree with the fake snow on it is that C and I C, or do you just want a plain old green with lights? It sounds cool. Mm. It sounds it sounds cool. Like it might it might add to the aesthetics, um, but uh, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's necessarily C. Yeah, like maybe it's just a personal preference thing. They got tr- trees are going Terminator like Transformer now. I've seen a tree at Walmart where you just plug it in right out the box. You plug it in and it and it it grows right. What? Yeah, it grows itself <laughs> up and it already has the decorations on it, so it just goes and it's done. And you push, you put it back in, push the button, and it goes back. And you just put it right Dang, in the box. You see how lazy people are now, man. It's nobody, bad. nobody even wants to just stack the two. There's literally two parts mm-hmm. usually to the tree, bro. Yep, very much That's so. Crazy. Okay, so uh, flocking tree. You say, hey, it sounds cool. It's a C. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this is the long debate. This is a, a debate that has been um, talked about for ages. And you maybe not have seen this movie, but Die Hard. Die Hard. Have you seen Die Hard? Um, With Bruce Willis. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I've seen. It. I I can't like recall the exact scenes and everything, but I'm pretty sure I've seen it. So a lot of people call this movie a a, a Christmas, Christmas movie. movie. Yeah, I've I've heard this debate before. Mm-hmm. But um, is it a? Are, so is the question? Is it a Christmas movie? The question is considering Die Hard a Christmas movie. Is that C or not C? I I guess I don't know. Enough background. Okay, uh, like, I don't know the I don't know the, the movie. Let me give you a quick quick synopsis okay, of the movie. Okay. It's a husband and a wife. They're going to the co- uh, the company Christmas party, which is downtown in a building. It's a Christmas party. Terrorists end up taking over the building. The husband 
is a law enforcement officer. He sneaks away, ends up taking out all the terrorists, and saves the day, saves his wife, saves Christmas. Oh, that's a Christmas movie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me, anything anything that has anything that has like to do with Christmas is a Christmas movie. I dig it. Like uh, I feel like the people that oppose that are like the Hallmark movie mm. that you know, they're just strictly that type of stuff. That mugs those stuff. Those things can get boring, man. Would you ever act in a Hallmark movie? <laughs> Definitely not, man. <laughs> I was, uh, me and my wife, we've been, I think we were watching some the other day, like maybe, maybe just yesterday, like, and I was just like sitting there laughing because I was like, these things are so cheesy. Holy moly. And they're so, like, it's so predictable, man. You already know what's going to happen. They fall in love. Like, oh my gosh, this guy's famous. He's never had a true love. All these girls want him. Oh, my gosh. It's Christmas. And now he meets this girl and then takes her home. Meet the family and, you know, (laughs) happily ever after. Sounds like a real life story to me. Uh, (laughs) I feel like, yeah, there's there's like three movies at least that I've seen with that same storyline, bro. Mm. But they just recycle them. I actually I seen a meme where it was like the same exact cover of the movie, but just different actors with different movie title but the same coloring the same type of font and everything and it was That's all hallmark wild. but ha- people watch it hallmark got a well-oiled machine where you can tune in for a 45 minute movie every night every day every second and it will be a holiday movie they got thousands of them oh that's insane and they're cheap man. to make yeah i think about it it's very cheap to make not a they lot to look it. cheap too man <laughs> don't do that <laughs> Yeah, if you like looking at some of the props, be like, "Hey, man, the boom mic is sticking out in the back." <laughs> hey, yo, somebody forgot to tuck that in. <laughs> hey, man, his microphone, bro. Yeah. So, oh, Mark, he, man, Heva, what's up? This joint right here, man. Um. Yes, when are we gonna get visuals for this song? Oh man. I was talking to I was talking to my boy Paulo Rose, man. We were supposed to do a Christmas video um f- f- this year. I mean like it was it should have been done already. So I don't know if I if I'll be able to pull one out this year, but I don't know. We still got a little bit of time, right, Dre? Yeah, we got I mean, yeah, we do. Especially I mean, honestly, it can leave it can live forever, right? It doesn't take much. You can even have uh your wife shooting on an iPhone. You know what I mean? True, true. We all walk around with a 4K camera. Shoot, not mine, bro. I got a freaking iPhone 6. <laughs> Damn. This, he, this thing is ancient. Bro. Oh, you got the button. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he seen the button, he knew. Damn. Bro. Yeah, so, yeah there's, there's no, um, there's no video, music videos being done on this thing. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, it could. Some some directors, can they can work magic. Hey, man, you got to work with what you got, right? Exactly. Yeah, man, I, I want to do visuals bad. I just got to... Just gotta set up a time, honestly, with my boy. Yeah, Paulo's but nice too. Paulo's in, he's been in his bag, bro. Mm. Shout out to Paulo, man. Paulo Rose. You know what's crazy is I actually I was um I was one of the first people to work with Paulo, and so so this what is what video? Um, because I did that. I didn't do a reaction on it. My song for you. You did actually. I think, did I? I? I believe so. Was it the one with the with me and Mo Too Crazy? Oh yeah. yeah. And you're, yeah, wearing, you, you're wearing the the Rose you, Park jersey. Yeah, you were over here saying the thingy thing. Yeah, yeah. you got a thingy thing on that one. Yeah, but uh, so Paulo actually hit me up and he goes, "This was when he just first started doing music uh, music videos. He had he had probably done one video mm. at that point in his career. So he did he did one video with his boy Kyer, and so I met Kyer through him, um, and and uh, he was just like, "Hey, bro, I've like done this video." Um, I want to do a free video for you because I'm trying to get my name out there. I said, shoot, bro, I'm all for it. Because I was just starting to. I just dropped my my first EP. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, all right, let's meet up and let's do it, bro. I had no idea what it was going to turn out to be. And then um, he sh- we went to get uh, Trolley Square. He shot. He took some shots with me and Mo. And then um, when he sent me the uh, when he sent me the first edit, I was like, bro, you're crazy, man. Like, this kid is insane. Bro, after, after that, my boy Venu and Bobby seen the video. 
um, they hit they hit me up and they're like, bro, Paulo's nice. Uh, and then so um, I think I shot over his contact or maybe they might have hit him up through Instagram. And then he does a video for them. And then after that, it was just snowball, bro. Yeah. Now this dude's just all over the city. Like, mm-hmm. you, I don't know an artist in the city that hasn't dropped a video with Paulo's name on it. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, bro, I'm so proud of this kid, man. He's killing it. Yeah. So I'm I'm proud of him, man. He's he's done his thing. He told me he does music too. He does. Shout out to, to Paulo, man. He's doing he's doing music. And he he recently told me that that's kind of what he's trying to buckle down to is in the music scene. So one of my uh one of the things that I've learned myself is there is a time when you have to kind of make your name, right? And you have to kind of take a, a a second to to do other people's work. But there's also a time when you need to focus on yourself. Oh yeah. Right? And um, I hope people don't lose focus of that. Yes, it's great to work with other people, but also focus on yourself. Um, once I started taking that advice, I started to see so much traction in my own career. Right. Because it was, for the longest time, it was me helping other people do their dreams, right? I love that. And uh, and which I'm, I'm very grateful for. I, I, I learned a lot from that. Um, but also, don't forget about which, what you care about, too. Sometimes you got, yeah, sometimes you got to put yourself first, man. I mean, because that's what's really going to matter in the long run. So and I think that goes for like uh, mental health, mm-hmm. your physical health, everything, man. Like sometimes you just got to turn off everything around you and just um, just sit there and be like, dang, I'm, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to take care of. That's what I think um, like is more is, is the most important for me right now is it's not just me anymore. Like I said, like I told you, I, if it like I, I would just sit in the lab all day if i could bro mm-hmm. and just write man but i gotta remember man i got i got a wife to to um to take care of man and so she needs she needs my time um and she also needs me and so like i gotta be my best self for her but i can't unless i'm you know i'm, I'm my best self and i feel like i'm my best my my best self when i'm chasing my passion mm-hmm. and so I, I gotta she understands i gotta be writing sometimes i gotta be in the lab sometimes and she's gotta do her thing and then when we come together we just we're just the best versions of ourselves, and that's the best us. And so, what's Utah County got popping right now? Hey, man, Utah County's where it's at, bro. You know, I, I slept on well, it before I before I moved out there, I mean, bro. You know, Sh- hey, shout out to the lake, man. That's where I was born and raised. <laughs> you know, Rose Park. That's where I'll, I'll always rep, man. Represent, but yeah. Utah County's Utah County's nice, man. They got some good stuff out there, man. So, why haven't you locked down somewhere to record then? And Start cranking out music in in Utah County. I just I don't know I don't know too many engineers out there. Um, my two main studios I record out is my boy Dylan, and then I got Red Light Recording. Everybody knows that's the hub in in um, in Salt Lake, and so so yeah, I'm always traveling to record. So okay. that's that's tough. But if I could lock in a, a, a spot, I just need to make the connections out there. I'm sure there's studios out there. Yeah. You know, there's got to be. But I just need to need to know the right people. Will we uh will we see more of Hiva in 2023? Bro, I'm coming. I'm bro, I'm I'm coming hard, bro. I'm putting Now don't say this because I will use this as a clip and if I don't see nothing in the next 4 months, right, but, I'm yeah. going to play this and be like tag Hiva. Listen. Hashtag he said he's coming. Listen, 2023 the vault is is just going to be open, bro, and it's just going to flow. Okay. Really, man. Like I just want to um I feel like um, since I, I don't know at what point I started getting like um, over critical of my myself and my my own like criticizing my own work too much. Like I, I get I get excited about something. I listen to it for a few weeks and then I just I'm not excited about it no more. And it just and I just sit on that project forever where the whole world's never heard, uh, heard it. You know, mm-hmm. my my listeners haven't heard it yet. And so. Just uh, my goal for 2023 is when I'm excited uh, about something is I'm going to drop it um, at that at that moment that I'm excited. So yeah. that's going to so it's going to take a lot um, just because I, I like to I'm, I'm a perfectionist. And so um, but but I think um, I think it'll really help me elevate my myself, my career. And I'll, I'll feel a lot more confident. You know, we often talk about support. We often often talk about um, people helping us. Right. Right. Um but sometimes we're too prideful to say, hey, we need help with this and that and the third. Mm-hmm. What can we help Heva with? What does Heva need to be successful? Um, and Not to say you can't do it yourself, but this this thing, whether if it's a, a producer, a writer, a videographer, whatever it is, what would help you right now? Shoot. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of it's just like 
self-motivation and you know me getting myself to the studio me getting myself to to write and stuff me me pushing out content but um it's just taking the time taking the time to listen taking the time to uh to to share i mean I've, i feel like that's what um any creative um person or any artist would would ask from from their supporters is just to, to share man because um we need a we need we need every chance we can to get to new audiences so just sharing any content that, that we create because you know a lot of people don't know like how um how nervous um it, you can be as a as a creator right um or, and how much work goes into putting out content mm -hmm. um and then so it's, it's just take that absorb it um and then share it but then also um as far as like um you and and and, and the crew man if you guys know any um just any any producers um, any other any other studios that are in the area, man? I'm just trying to start getting connected to 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 everybody, man. I just want to be out, want to be out there, um, and I want to be available to other artists um, for them to hit me up. I want to start working, uh, collab with people. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the whole vision, man. Going into 2023, man. Well, make sure you reach out to Heva um, if you want to work. It sounds like you're ready to hit the ground running. Yes, sir, man. All so gas, man. All gas. 2023. When you made when you made this song right here, right? Um, this was one that I think this is one we played on the radio, right? Yes, sir. D and D, man. This one, like I, I was in a different bag, man. Like <sighs> that's what I'm saying. This is this one I was in in the in the lab every day. Such a good song. Okay. Nobody saying pretty, pretty, please. Yeah. If you hit my phone, leave a message at the tone. Tell them leave me alone when I'm with you. Cause ain't nobody ever. Such yeah. a good song, man. I, I, I look, and I play this song. I play these songs because this is what we want. This is like, come on, come on. Let's go get her, man. Shout out to all my go getters. This is the latest single that you dropped. <laughs> yes, sir. Mo Too Crazy, Bobby. You should know better. Woo. I'm a go getter, a go getter. No, mm -hmm. no, baby, I'm a go getter, a go getter. No. I ain't waiting on the now, Heva, how don't you listen to that and just get motivated to just like go and just create? Something right now Yeah man um, Like I see So much And if I was a musical producer If I was You know this thing I'm, I'm doing what I can right now yeah, Which man. is Sharing That's, your shout stuff Shout out to Dre man Shout out to Dre <laughs> I, Big I shout do, out always I do what I can do I can't do everything Yes sir If you are a producer If you're somebody With a recording studio If you're somebody that can help uh, Just back he, My thing is Is that we If you believe in something And somebody I believe in you so what I, what I, I can do that, is man. what I'm doing now, man. And uh, I want, plus I'm a fan. I want more music like this. That's love, man. If we want the thing that we love, we need to support it, right? Right. So I hope that, uh, I hope we get more of this in 2023. Um, I look forward to it. Um, Guaranteed, brother. And you already know, whatever I can do, I'm here to help you out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. We locked in. Heva, where's the socials? Where can we follow you and all that good stuff? So uh, socials is heva.music on all social media platforms. I um, had a whole hard time when you were she loves Heva. Oh God, <laughs> I had the hardest right? time. So and that, that's what that's what I'm I'm saying, man. People don't know it was a business move, man. I had to I had to change change from that that name. Like I said, that so that name actually my very first name she loves Heva came from. I was I named myself self after one of these dancers that I seen like. He was he was one of those dudes that brought in the whole like you know this thing yeah I um, mean so like I always looked up to the to those dudes and so I just put I just kind of stole his name and put because his name was She Loves Michi I went I went and put myself as She Loves Heva oh yeah I thought there was a girl that like loved Heva nah definitely. and then your wife you got you found your wife and she was like nah you need to change this up <laughs> that's what, she don't love you no more <laughs> I love you <laughs> no man yeah you gotta change your name to I love Heva so, yeah like I didn't think about it after after like I dropped my first song I was like. Like, man, yeah, that, that name is just terrible, bro. And so it took me a few months, but finally I was a business move. I had to, to change the change the name, especially for branding, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can't brand a whole sentence, bro. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to just take Heva, and that's it. And so, yeah, man, Heva 2023, man, we coming, running it up. Um, one, I gotta, more time, one more time to socials. Uh, the socials is uh, Heva.music. 
on uh, all social media platforms. I'm mainly on TikTok and uh, Instagram right now. So um, hit me up on there, man. Let's let's work. If it, if anybody wants to work, I'm down. I'm open to work. Um, hit me up about features, and then um, yeah, just be ready, man. Just be ready. I'm, I look forward to it. Heva, man, I appreciate you coming on the show, telling us a little bit about your younger Christmas and the current Christmases that you uh you uh in, you you are participating in. Um, yes, sir. You know, I always got your back, brother. Always, man. And that big shout out to Dre before I, you know, while I'm here, shout out to Dre, man, for everything he does for not just me, but um everyone 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 around me, everyone else in the city, the artists, um, the creators, everyone else that you've reached out to that you've um, uh, used your platform to help, man, because you do have a good, uh, a platform, man. And so grateful for, for Dre, um, grateful for um, his, his team um, and everything that you do for the city, man. Not it's not not even just the 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 community, man. You do you do a ton for the city, so thank you. It's love, bro, and we appreciate you always, man. Thank you, brother. Locked in. Now give me more music. Oh, <laughs> already, bro. <laughs> Got you, bro. You already know what the deal is. Have the day you deserve. Protect your light. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Yes, Peace. sir.